Hello everyone, I am Nutrix and today we're looking into a new UVI virtual synthesizer. Like everything that UVI does, it's a sample-based synth. It's more a bank of sample and presets because it runs in, inside the same instrument that you already have, the free UVI workstation or the paid Falcon, which is their top of the line sampler. <laughs> Now the PX Waveframe, it's part of the prototype series. These are uh, devices that not a lot of people can get your hands on because it costs a lot of money. And these are prototypes or very few units were made. In this case, this is based on a sampler that existed at one point in history when 24-bit samplers were not something you would see often. And it was still, you know, in the big, years of high-end samplers that uh, were not main, you know, a main tool that was really just only a few artists could pay for it because it costs so much. Because you know UVI, they sample the stuff and then you can use it in your own way to make new stuff out of it, but it's not the same engine. They're not recreating the engine, they're sampling the sounds and then giving you an interface that is always really fun and quirky but in the end, it's just another graphic interface to run the same type of logic behind it. So if you saw any type of demo on any sound bank or synthesizer from UVI using Workstation, for example, you will understand all the windows we will be looking at. Um, I'll go quickly around how what you can control here. But most the most important part here is you can have a bunch of really good sounds really quickly. And you still have a synthesizer to tweak it into your own stuff. You can create from scratch if you want, but let's just listen to what they made. Uh, right away you go, ah, okay, I, I can do something with this really quickly. Now you have these different tabs you can switch between. You have the main window where you have the layers. It shows you there's basically you're playing two layers at the same time here, volume pan, and do you want to use the effects on that layer? You have layer one and two, and this you've got amplitude and filter with the ADSR. So even if the sound that the original one maybe did not have a filter, in this case, you can add the filter here. You have control separately over the two or the both at the same time. So if you want to change the amplitude and envelope for the two layers simultaneously, you press on both and you change this. This is where you can actually click and see all the samples that they made and you can load the samples, just like loading an oscillator, basically. So you have a bunch of that. And these are sounds that would come with the original sampler. So you would have these sounds right away. And some of them you might recognize in classic 80s music because this was used in on albums. The original, at least, not this. This is a new one. Now, you also have the edit window where you have voicing control over layer one and layer B or both at the same time. So you want to have one to be polyphonic, the other one to be monophonic. You can control the time, the depth, you can control the pitch of the just the layer. You want a vibrato, a tremolo, a filter. You have control over that for the mod wheel control. And you want it to be stereo off. And there's going to be, well, stereo. But alternate means it's going to play left, right, left, right every time you press a different key. And unison will play more than one at the same time. And it will be a bigger sound. In the mod section with an LFO, you can just step value what you want. It can be sent in this case to the filter, layer A and one or two, and it's sent to the volume also. And the LFO, well, it's an LFO with different shape. All of that is classic LFO. And you can sign to the filter, to the pitch or to the level. So the classic destination. Effects, basically you get EQ, a drive, a Taurus, it's a chorus, an ensemble, a phaser, a delay, and a reverb. So all of this is stuff that you have in all of the other workstation-based sound banks. And you get the arpeggiator. Again, same thing that we saw in all the other ones. So um, you get the arpeggiator for the layer one and layer two. You can link them together. You can change the value in it. You can load different 
already existing presets. You can have step mode or chords mode. And this is the semitone. You can detune each of the steps. This is the pan of the step. You want to pan on one side or the other. And this is the uh, length of the, or the gate, if you want, of the step. If you're looking to know what this is all about, at the bottom here appears the value or the type of information you're going to put in here. So if you don't know what this is for, just put it here and you wait to ARP mode. Okay, you can change different type of ways it's going to go up or down or up and down. So oh, there's three different ways that the ARP can work and the gate here. This is the tour of the synthesis of this now, where this becomes really interesting is you double tap here and you decide, I'm gonna to listen to animated mix. Let's say we start with this.
that's it. That's the PX waveframe from UVI. Again, a bunch of really cool sounds to play with, sampled from a piece of hardware that there's no way I can get my hands on. Still, I have the sound, can play with it, and uh, the presets are just quick and easy to use, and I still can go in and tweak it if I need to. That's it. Stay safe, make more music, and see you soon. Cheers.